Hey everybody, this is Mark Bunting, the lead pastor of Emmanuel Church here in Salisbury. And I want to welcome you and thank you so much for joining us for our online church platform today. It's so good to have you. Hey, listen, our mission here at Emmanuel is to engage everyone everywhere. And one of the greatest ways that you can help us do that is by participating with the online chat today. We have our eChurch volunteers ready to pray for you, uh, ready to talk with you, ready to see how we could best connect with you. So make sure you participate on the online experience today. Again, thank you so much for joining us. We hope you have a great experience. Amen. Mark chapter 6 today as we continue on with our series called Staycation. Anybody getting anything out of this? Come on. Everybody say stay. stay. And that's what we've been focused on in a, in a time and age where we celebrate leaving and taking steps of faith. Sometimes we got to celebrate staying and just being faithful in the season God has put us in. Amen. So Mark chapter 6, we're going to be getting into a familiar passage of Scripture. I won't read the whole passage. Uh, I'll get into it later in my message. But I just really want to focus in on Mark uh, chapter 6, verses uh, tw uh, 30 through 32. If you got it, say go. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then, because so many people, here's three words I want you to get this morning. Because so many people were coming and going, coming and going, that they did not even have a chance to eat. He said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. I want to talk to you just a few moments, a message entitled, get some rest, get some rest. Now, before we pray and we're seated, I want you to look at your neighbor and ask them, how did you sleep last night? How did you sleep last night? I don't know, how many were up late because people kept setting off those illegal fireworks? Come on, somebody. And you were up till 1130 at night because people don't know what it means to be quiet after 10 p.m. on July the 4th. Anybody with me today? Anybody need a little extra coffee to get you going this morning? Come on. We're going to talk about the subject of rest. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for being in this place, being in this room. We feel you, Holy Spirit, now in this moment on this 4th of July Sunday. Thank you for our freedoms, God. We celebrate that today because if it was not for freedoms, we would not be able to gather in this place without persecution in this religious setting to lift up your name today. Thank you for our freedoms. But as Sarah prayed earlier, thank you, God, for the freedoms we now have in you. For Christ set us free from the law of sin and death, and now we rejoice in our salvation. Father, help us deal with the subject of rest. Illuminate your word. Help us see something different that we've never seen before that we might leave this cha place changed. I'm going to go ahead and bless it right now. Bless that barbecue, God, this afternoon. Bless the hot dogs. And, Lord, I pray that you would empty every calorie out of every cookie and every piece of cake and pie in Jesus' name. And all the saints of God said amen, amen and amen. Look at your neighbor one more time and tell him it's time to get some sleep. And then you may be seated uh, today. Um, I am not much of a camper. Where are all my camping people at? Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't even ask that. It's 4th of July weekend. Everybody's camping. Everybody's camping. A lot of people going. A lot of people camping. A lot of people traveling. 4th of July weekend. I am not a camper. Some people are camping. I ask people all the time, do you like camping? Yes, I like camping. I have a camper. So you are cheating then. Because you're not really camping. You're glamping. Come on now. If it's on wheels and you got a kitchen with running water, it's cheating, y'all. It's cheating. I don't, I don't, I'm not a big fan of camping, uh, mostly because one of the first times, I know it's hard to say it, I just went camping just a few years ago, first time, one of the first times I'd ever been camping, and uh, we went on a men's retreat here at the church, 
uh, up in the Shenandoah Mountains, and I had one of my best friends tell me, listen, when we go camping, I got everything we'll ever need when we go camping with everybody. Don't worry about a thing. Don't bring, a, don't bring an air mattress. Don't bring a tent. Don't bring anything. I'll bring it all. So we get to the camping spot, and the first indication that it was going to go wrong was when he pulled out the tent in pieces. <laughs> Wasn't in a bag. Wasn't brand new, didn't have a set of instructions, pulled out the poles separately and said, sorry, I didn't have time to set it up before I came. I borrowed it from a friend. I'm praying, yeah, I'm praying everything is here. So after it took us two and a half hours to figure it all out and get everything set up, uh, then it was time to, to blow up the air mattress. Now, it was one air mattress, two people, the other person was not my wife, it was one of my good friends. He said, hey, no worries, it's a king size, it's a king size air mattress. We got plenty of room to separate ourselves at night, so he blew it up, and he was right. This thing, this thing was huge. So I got, I got this thing right here. I got it all, I got it all set up. I got uh, one of these. You ever seen one of these things before? You've used one, right? You know what that is? Sleeping bag. So I got my sleeping bag out and uh, and got it all set up and and uh, and I laid down for the night, and that's when I heard the storm start rolling in. And as the storms are rolling in, I hear drip, <laughs> drip. Now, it wasn't terrible. It was only one corner of one section of the tent. Here is the worst part about the camping trip. It wasn't that it was raining. It was the fact that about 1 a.m., the air mattress had a hole in it. It was one of them slow leaks. So I was on the corner as much as I could because I don't want to cuddle with him. <laughs> and because the air was leaving the air mattress, I kept rolling <laughs> in the middle towards him. He would meet me in the middle. That is not a good feeling. When you're back to back, with, so I would roll back out and roll back into the middle again. And I try to get situated. I did not sleep at all. You ever had a memorable moment of the lack of sleep that it is just burned in your mind forever? Folks, that's been almost 10 years ago, and here I am. I still remember I was miserable for the rest of the trip because I did not sleep at all. No rest. Now, maybe, maybe, maybe yours wasn't a camping trip, but if you got kids, I guarantee you you've not rested in a while. Come on, somebody. I got five, and my youngest is four, and we're just reaching this stage where everybody's starting to sleep through the night. It's an amazing thing when kids can sleep all night. I'm telling you, it is just the greatest. I feel like I can conquer anything as long as I got a little bit of rest. Where are all my parents at? Come on. We can conquer any. We can climb any mountain. As long as my kid will sleep, we're good. But there was a season and a time where nobody slept, y'all. Five kids, nobody slept. It was one or the other. Somebody was sick. Somebody's throwing up. I remember this one time. Do you remember this a few years ago when everybody got the stomach bug when it was going around? And everybody had it in the whole house at the same time but me. <laughs> they were up all night. I'd help one that was getting sick and I'd get them cleaned up. Then I'd run to the next room and the other one was throwing up and I'd get them cleaned up. Then I'd run to the next. Even Sarah was down for the count. She was pregnant with one of them. I think we only had four at the time on the three, four. We lose count after three. But one of them, she was pregnant with, with one of them. And it was, it was terrible. And after all night, I thought, man, I survived. 
I can get some sleep. As soon as I saw the sun come up and I thought I could finally get some sleep when everybody was settled. <laughs> my stomach started turning and I was up all day throwing up. It's just stuck, <laughs> it's stuck in my mind, man. I'll, I'll never forget the lack of sleep and rest. You ever had a time like that in your life? Come on. Where you were just, you were just tired, tired, tired. You just wanted some rest. I wonder today, I wonder on this 4th of July Sunday, is anybody tired? Now, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about being physically tired. Tired like you stayed up all night. I'm not talking about, man, I should have gone to bed before 11 o'clock because this 9 a.m. service is killing me getting up this early and getting ready. I'm not talking about physically tired because how many know you can physically be fine but simply exhausted in every other area of your life. You got a good nine hours, but regarding of everything else, you need some rest. I'm talking about tired emotionally, tired mentally, tired spiritually, tired vocationally, tired relationally. I am just plain tired, and I need some sort of sleep and rest in my life. Anybody else ever been there? Maybe you're right there right now. Maybe you're tired of the pressures of producing that the people around you place on you and you're just tired of everybody wanting something from you and you're tired maybe maybe you're maybe you're just you're just tired of of society and culture because you know after covid hit it's like everybody went crazy And you're just tired of it. Maybe, maybe you're, if you're like me, maybe you're just tired of COVID in general. Can I get a good hallelujah, amen in the house this morning? I'm tired of it, man. I am so sick and tired of COVID. I'm tired of all these, of all these things because life has a way of wearing you down and making you weary. draining you and depleting you. You know, that is one of the most dangerous places to be in in your life. You know why? When you have no rest, that's when you get reckless. You start saying some things and doing some things that are completely contradictory to the character and nature of who you are. Christ changed my life, but when I got no rest, you better watch out and get out of my way when I'm weary because I'm likely to say <laughs> and do some stuff that, and you, and you might, want, might say, where did that come from? Why did I say that? Why did I do it? Why did I react that way? I'm going to tell you why. You're weary. And you need rest. And it's in those places you have to be most careful because you will find yourself getting in all kinds of problems. So today, I want to do a sleep study. And the pres prescription is not one of them pat machines. But the prescription comes according to God's word. Somebody say, I need rest. Over in Mark chapter 6, it's an interesting passage of Scripture that, that is about ready to get into one of Jesus' most famous miracles that he performs. Over in Mark chapter 6, we see the disciples returning from the mission of preaching and teaching and going around sharing the good news of the gospel around. And as they return, they've come to Jesus to give him a report. You see, here's the thing about Jesus. Jesus knew that the the multiplication, the infiltration, the duplication of the kingdom that would come could not come from just himself. So Jesus empowered these men with his mission to go out and preach the good news. He knew that it could not just come from himself. It came with the, 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 the appointing 
of people. It came with the delegation of others to, to reach even more. Even Jesus himself said that you will do greater things, and I'm going to send one to help you do it because it's, that's the infiltration of the kingdom is the delegation of the mission to others. And so he knew he could not do it all alone. Can we stop right there and take a TV time out just for a second? Because it would, good, it would be good for us to understand that the reason why many of us don't have any rest is because we take on the responsibility of everything that comes our way in life. Hey, I know you're a doer. I know you're a tasker. I know you are a load carrier. But when will you come to the, your own conclusion that you cannot do everything yourself? That's why you have no result. The reason why you have no rest is your greatest frustration comes with a lack of empowerment and delegation to others. Maybe some of us, if you want to find rest on this 4th of July Sunday, maybe you got to start empowering some people around you to participate and what is happening in your life because it will kill you if you keep up with this pace and never give away anything that's going on. Come on, help me preach this morning. And so this is where we're at. Jesus knew that. He, he knew the, the delegation and, 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 and giving out to watch the kingdom go forward. And now they are returning to communicate what happened. And look at verse 30, what it says. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then, everybody say then. Because so many people. were coming and going that they didn't even have a chance to eat. They gather around Jesus and after being gone for so long, they didn't even have a chance to rest because here comes the crowd gathered around. And it was the pushing against them and wanting to know what was going on. And they're coming and going that they got so distracted by the busyness of what is happening around them that they didn't even have a chance to eat. I want to talk to you real quick about the consumption. The consumption. I want to talk to you about the consumption. There could not be a more clear way to communicate the sheer chaos that is ensued in your life because of the lack of rest other than coming and going. Come on, your calendar, I bet you if I took out your phone calendar right now in your phone, if, if I looked at your calendar at home, it's filled with sheer chaos marked all up. How many know what I'm talking about? It's your calendars, it's your kids' schedules, it's your vocation, and it's even your vacations. That got you pulled in so many different directions all over the place. And what we do is we divulge in it and become consumed by it as if the consumption of the clutter, of the noise, of the things, the coming and going will give us the rest we need. I wonder if I looked at your agenda today, would it say coming and going? What are you doing Monday? I'm coming here and then I'm going there. What are you doing Tuesday? Tuesday going to look like the same thing. I'm getting up at the same time. I'm coming here. Then I'm going there. Then I'm dropping there. And then I'm going to come back over here and go there. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It's the coming and going. It's the busyness of life all the time it, that completely consumes us to the point where we think all of this out there somehow, some way is going to give us the rest we are looking for. But the more you divulge in it, the more you take it in, it doesn't give you rest. It's sucks you dry of it. I was talking to somebody the other day, and I, and I asked them, they just got back from vacation. Maybe it was Pete. I think I was talking to Pete, our worship leader. How was vacation? I was tired after you get back. You know, I said, well, let's be honest. When you have kids, you don't have a vacation. The kids have a vacation. You don't rest. You cater to their needs all the time. 
That's why you tired. You need a vacation from your vacation. That's why, because it's just the busyness of the, it's the coming and going, the coming and going, and the coming and going. You know what that coming and going is called? I've said it a few times. Let me clarify. It is the busyness of life. The busyness will have you going back and forth so much, it will burn you out. The busyness of life will distract you so much that you are depleted and malnourished and you don't even know it. Sucking up all your time, sucking up all your energy, sucking up everything that's going on. That you don't even have a chance to eat. I ain't talking about tacos. Mm. I ain't talking about them burgers on the grill today. I ain't talking about that pulled pork. I'm, I'm talking about spiritual substance and sustenance. Can I propose to you today? That we consume what brings the chaos, and we never consume what brings the calm. No wonder you ain't got no rest. No wonder you're so tired. You keep eating and eating and eating all the busyness. You're so bloated with the busyness. You're so tired. We were talking about it yesterday after we ate a big meal for lunch. We celebrated fourth yesterday and after we ate, we're like, oh God, I'm so tired. I'm ready to take a nap. Just, oh. No wonder we, no wonder we feel that way. We've been consuming the wrong things and wondering why we feel so weird. It comes with a consumption your rest comes with the right consumption. It is the right diet that brings you the rest that you desire. It is consuming the right thing. Doesn't mean there's nothing wrong with the demands and the strains of life. We all got them. But if I am not consuming the right thing at the same time to give me the rest I need, man, I will become malnourished and I won't be able to find the rest I'm looking for. I wonder today, if you're depleted, have you checked your diet from what you are consuming because it is that consumption that gives you the rest that you need consuming with not the busyness, but consuming the word. Consuming worship. Consuming fellowship with the friends and saints of God. This is the nourishment that you need every day. I wonder, did anybody come to church today ready to consume? Because it's the fuel you need to give you the rest you need every day of your life. Because you either got to eat it or life will eat you. It will chew you up and spit you out, y'all. But if you need that rest, you got to come ready to consume. And I'm talking about consuming every day. Because you can't just come to church one hour on Sunday and expect to get enough consumption to give you rest every single day of the week. You got to have more than Pastor Mark up on the platform. I can't come to your job Monday morning with a spoon saying, open up wine. You got to start getting your own consumption and start feeding your own self because I can't be there every day. It's like raising my kid when they were at a proper age. I didn't mind when they were in the high chair putting a bib on them and saying, open up, it's going to be good. But what would it look like when they turned 16? I got my oldest about ready to turn 15 in a couple of months. If I had to do the same thing, put them in the high chair, put the bib on her and say, open your mouth, here it comes. Come on, eat the right things. No, 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 because there is an age of maturity 
maturity where I got to take responsibility for my own nourishment. I got to pick up my own spoon and I got to taste and see that the Lord is good. I can't be there for you all the time. And so Monday morning, you got to have enough responsibility to consume the word on your own, to give you the rest you need when you get to work and everybody's acting like a bunch of crazy fools. Come on. I'm going to consume a little worship on my way in. Turn the radio up just a little bit louder because that's the only rest I can get from all of the chaos that ensues of everything that is going around me. Somebody say rest. rest. Woo, I'm fired up. Come on, check your diet. Look at your neighbor and say, check your diet. Uh-huh. Check your diet. And then he says probably one of the most important parts in verse, the rest of verse 31, he said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Jesus said, come with me. Come, come with me by yourselves. Of all the things that are pushing up against you, I want you to pull away and be with me in a secret place, in a solitary place, because it's in that place where you find your greatest rest. This is the second thing I want to talk to you about this morning. It's the connection. Everybody say the connection. Now, how many would agree with me in life? There are always people and places pushing up against you to try to draw something from you. Always looking to take away from you in different times and moments in your life. I guarantee you, before we even leave this place today, your phone's going to be ringing. Let's be honest, you ain't answering it. You want them to text you. But your phone's ringing, and it's somebody wanting to resolve an issue for you. They want you to leave what you're doing and run to them and take care of their issue right now. Come on, somebody. You know that person just came up in your mind. You don't want to say it. Uh-huh. The phone's going to ring, huh? There's a relationship. As soon as you get to the barbecue today, you know Aunt Bootsy going to drain you. You know Aunt Bootsy going to be all over it. Honey, child, go get me a plate, would you? I'm not getting Come on. Wait on her hand in front all the time. Because people are constantly pu pushing up against us. And that's why you can't get no rest. But it's in the midst of the pushing that he wants you to pull away with him. I believe God has been calling many of you today for quite a while. And you know what he's been calling? Come with me. I know, I know all this stuff has been pushing and pushing, but I need you to pull away for just a little while to a secret place, a solitary place, so that you can get some rest. Now, now this looks different for all of us. Sometimes it's a geographical location. Maybe you got to get away for a weekend getaway to leave some things and some people in some places so you can get clarity inside of your mind. Maybe you got to go away to another state or maybe it's just a drive to Ocean City and back just to clear your mind. But there are times where you got to pull away to a different geographical location, but more than just geographical location. It is a spiritual observation. That there are times in your life if you need rest, you got to get alone with God. Now this, my friends, is a lost art. To get alone with God, to put it away, from the things that are pushing you, all the push notifications, 
that are pushing up against you to put it away for a little while and pull away, pull away from him and just get along with God. And sometimes you got to have silence and solitude without every, anybody around so you can hear the one that's been calling to you, come with me. Come with me to a solitary place. Huh? I, sometimes you got to do it daily. Sometimes you, some of you drive by the church and you see me walk in the parking lot, y'all honk at me all the time. Every time you drive by Beagling, you're wondering what is he doing? Is he trying to get his, uh, no, no, I'm not trying to get my exercise. I'm just trying to pull away for a little bit and walk the parking lot just a little bit to get clarity inside of my mind and my heart because it's not going to come from any other place. But when you push away from him, it is in that secret place of the soul is where you find your rest and your rejuvenation for what you need. That's why he said in Psalms 91, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest, will rest, will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. It does not come by your way. With the chaos that ensues, it comes under the shelter of who he is, just in a solitary place, because your greatest rest comes when you are connected with him. Yeah. To disconnect from it and con connect with him. Jesus says in the book of Matthew, chapter 11, I think it's on the screen. I don't see the slide, but it should be up there. Come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you. Do you see the call in that? Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and, and you will find rest for your souls. Here is the tension we live in. The conflict comes from Jesus calling me to come and to pull away. But the crowd keeps yelling, come to me, do for me, meet my need. Isn't it amazing how sometimes in order to meet the expectations from people, we will spend of ourselves instead of listening for him. We want to help people. We want to meet their needs. We will do everything we can to help them. But yet we never listen to the times where we've got to get alone with him. This is the tension we are tied to. But if you want to be any good to other people, you've got to draw from a source that's greater than your own. And you're not going to get it any other way. This is where we get to Jesus' most famous miracles. This is what I want to tie it into, and we're going to be at Denny's for some pancakes and fireworks. I promise. Here we go. I want you to see it. This is the point where Jesus, they get into a boat, they push off into a solitary place, and they get to the other side. Now the crowd follows them. Here's the thing we often don't understand. There's always going to be a crowd. You don't always have to listen to the voices constantly all the time because guess what? They're going to follow you wherever you go. So they were in the boat in solitude just for a small time, just in a little spot, just for a little time. And when they got to the other side, here is the crowd. And this is where Jesus performs the most amazing miracle in Scripture, if you continue to read on. This is where Jesus feeds the 5,000, where he takes the little and multiplies into it much and feeds all the people that are pulling from here. Can I propose to you today that the greatest 
greatest way that you are empowered for other people is to pull away from him that if you want re the, the rest you receive, the rejuvenation that you receive in him is how you reach other people in your life. You can't constantly go meet the demands and the pressures that people push on you without pulling away in secret and getting everything you need to give to other people. Can I break it down real easy for you? Here, let me break it down. You cannot give others what you do not have yourself. There can be no impartation without rejuvenation. If you are not rested, if you are not fueled, if you have not eaten, how in the world do you give other people bread when you're bankrupt of it? Because you can only give others what you yours, your, yourself have received. You can't give what you don't have. So this is the point of my message. Y'all with me? I haven't lost you. Have I? I'm almost done. This is what I'm saying today. Sometimes you can't stay, so you can stay. Did you get that? Sometimes in your life, you have to pull away so you can find rest, rejuvenation, and fuel your soul with the Father. So that way when you go back, you've got something to give others in your life. Now this is a lesson. My wife will go and preach me down right now. My wife will preach me down on this part. Because this is the part that I am learning as your pastor. In an all vulnerable moment, I've been the lead pastor here for five years. And two years ago, I found myself in a difficult spot. And the reason why it was a difficult spot for me, because all I was doing is this. All I was doing is this. I was giving and giving and giving and giving and giving and feeding and feeding and feeding and feeding and feeding and feeding. And people pulling, 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 constant, constant, constant. All the time, all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. That I got in such a bad place, my wife's like, you got to do something about this. This, we can't keep going in, in this. So I went and talked with a, with a mentor of mine, and I sat down with him, and I'll never, man, it was a conversation that changed my life that, 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 that has helped me over the last couple of years. You know what he told me? As I was sharing, how do you, how do you meet the demands? How do, you, how do you constantly give out to people and, and, and try, to, try to receive? But, man, there's, there's, no, there's no alone time. There's no time. How do you do all this in the, in, in the amount of time you have? And you know what he told me? After I've complained and argued and dumped all over him, he said, Mark, sometimes you have to make it about you right. so you can make it about others. Right. Now that sounds like a selfish statement but it's actually the most unselfish thing you can do. Because I learned that day, there's got to be boundaries. And when you put up boundaries, some people don't like it. But boundaries creates the place where my soul can rest so I can best feed other people. When I personally, as your pastor, and this, take this, y'all with me, this is personally for you too. If you do not pull away, you can never give anything to anybody else. So I've learned, I have got to, I already know the points, I already know the marks, I already know what I'm feeling, I already know how many weeks I'm in before I'm going to even feel it. I have got to pull away. I can't answer the phone all the time. See, I can't get to every text message. I can't respond to every single thing because if I do, I'll have nothing else to give to anybody else. I have no, I, have, I, don't ha I won't have anything left. So I have started to begin to put rhythms in place to pull away 
And you know what I found? When I get away in, in that rhythm of rest, then I'm able to give out more. That's right. That God actually multiplies the fish and loaves That's right. when I'm able to find rest in him. And I wonder what that looks like in your life today. Are you running on fumes? Maybe the answer to your rest is simply pulling away to find time. So that way when you hear and receive from the Father, you can freely give what you have freely received from him. So all the crowd is gathered. They're waiting on the other side of the boat, man. Come on, give me, give me, give me, give me. Da, da, da. <laughs> and here's the great thing about Jesus. He steps off the boat and he is filled, the Bible says, with compassion. Aren't you thankful for a God who has a heart of compassion towards his people who are in such desperate need all the time? But the disciples look at him and they wanted to send him away. He has compassion, they want to send away. Why? Because when you're restful, you're always able to recognize the needs of others better. So he, he does something amazing. He performs this miracle. And I love what he says to the disciples in Mark 6.35. By this time it was late in the day. So his disciples came to him. This is a remote place, they said. And it's already very late. Send the people away so that they can go to the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered, I love this. You give them something to eat. What do you mean? You know how much it would cost to, to do all this? Jesus said, you give them something to eat. We can't, we can't give them something. Now, Jesus already knew they didn't have it. He already knew they couldn't do it. But what he wanted them to recognize is that he is the one that controls the results. He is the one that is in control. He is the one that can handle it all. That's the third thing I want to talk to you about. It's the control. The reason why many of us have not found rest for our souls is because we're trying to control the results of our life. We always try to control the outcome. Come on, come on. We will manipulate, regulate, orchestrate to get whatever it is that we want to get out of it because we always want to control the issue. But God wants you to recognize, he wants you to re recognize that he is in control of the results. He wants you to see that he is a multiplying God, miracle working God, way maker God. And you would never see the results of what he can do if you are in control of the results. So sometimes all you can do is do what you can do and leave the rest up to God. Come on. You need what you need, like Paul Harvey said, you need to understand he has the rest of the story. So what you're sitting in right now, you may be trying to control, but you better just give him what you got. It might seem like little, but when you leave the results in his hands, I'm going to tell you what God can do with the rest of it. What he can do with the rest of it is create a result that is bigger and better than you could ever imagine out of your life. Come on. God can take the little and multiply it with much when you leave. Little is much when God is in it. That's something I can rest in today. Leave the rest up to him. That's how you get some rest. You know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of another boat ride that Jesus was on. And a massive storm came up. And the wind and the waves were beating up against the boat. And the disciples were so terrified and scared. They were wondering, will Jesus help? Will Jesus save us? Where in the world is Jesus?
Jesus. I don't see him anywhere. And you know where they found him? The Bible says they went down to the bottom of the boat. And guess where they found Jesus? Jesus was sleeping and he was resting. He wasn't worried about the wind and the waves. You know why? He controls the winds and the waves. And so in the middle of the situation of the storm, they said, Jesus, don't you care that the boat is going to crash into a million pieces? And Jesus got up from his rest. He went outside and he said, peace, be still to the storms and the waves. He finalized the rest of the story. And if you look at the scripture in the text, you see at the very beginning that Jesus himself gave them a promise that said, let us go to the other side. Did you forget the rest of the story, disciples? He didn't leave you out on your own. He woke up and said, we're going to get to the other side. I wonder today, what beat against your life? What has baffled you today where you don't know how you're going to make it? I'm going to be honest with you. God is not up off his throne saying, what are we going to do? How's it all going to turn out? How's it going to No, you know what he did? He sat down at the right hand of God to show the rest of the story. He controls the winds and the waves. He rules and reigns in his righteousness. And if he can control the seas and the wind. What makes you think he can't control the situations that try to take you out? Come on. That's the rest of the story that you're forgetting about. Get some rest today. You got a promise. We're going to the other side and it's our God that will get you there. Stand to your feet this morning and give God praise for the rest of the story. Come on. You got to get a rest. You got to get a promise. You got to get something inside your spirit. That's going to make the storm of your heart calm. God is not worried about it. It's fixed. It's done. He he knows what's going to happen. He controls all. And I've got to let him work out the rest of it. Can anybody rest on that today? He's got the rest of it. And I got to change my approach, my perspective to get that rest. Come on, get some rest. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your people today. Thank you for what you did in this house today. Thank you that we have the freedom to come together and to celebrate the nation but not just celebrate the nation, celebrate the freedom we have in you. Lord, some of us have off work tomorrow. I hope we get some rest. (laughs) But more than that, there's something inside of our heart that you got to do that's special. Just help us get a clear perspective on what you are doing, God, in the midst of us. Help us, God, to push away from the crowd and find you in a secret place, a solitary place. Maybe that's a few moments in the morning or the evening. Maybe it's at noontime. But to pull away from the things that are pushing against us, God. Help us to check our consumption of the things that we are digesting. So many of us are consuming the chaos of our calendars and the chaos of the media and social media so much it has affected our rest inside of our souls. Help us, Father God, to consume you more than the media or what man says. That's what we push into today. Help us, Lord, to find that rest in you. Thank you for what you did in this house today. We give you praise on this 4th of July weekend. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said. Come on, and all God's people said. Come on, would you give him some praise today? We serve a great God. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today for our eChurch Online. We're so grateful that you took the time to join us today. If you made a decision for Christ or need prayer, want to know just a little bit more about the church or your relationship with God, we'd love to connect with you. 
If you could text that number on the bottom of the screen, someone will be reaching out to you to see how we can best serve you. Again, thank you so much for joining us today.